Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at how the kidney carries out excretion, how the kidney carries out osmoregulation, and then we'll finish with a summary. So the kidneys are a pair of organs in the body which are very important for two main functions. They're kidney bean shaped, hence the name of the bean kidney bean, and there's one either side of the body, and they lie just behind the abdominal cavity, so they're mainly in the lower back. So here's just a diagram illustrating where they are, and here are the two kidneys. And the main function of the kidney is to produce urine. So urine is an excretory product and it's a fluid which we then store in the bladder and then excrete out various products of our different reactions in the body. And they can vary the amount of urine. So they can create a large amount of urine in a small amount of time or they can create less urine. So it creates various volumes of urine. And the way that they produce urine is that they act as the filters of blood in our body. So essentially for each kidney, blood enters through an arteriole and it divides and spreads throughout the tissues of the kidney in order to be filtered. And in being filtered, the blood is basically cleaned. So it takes a lot of toxins or waste products out of the blood and the kidney will store it and turn it into urine, which then flows down this track known as the ureter. So urine flows out of the kidney. And then eventually, once the blood has been cleaned, it returns to the circulation as venous blood into a venule. So the kidney has two main purposes, the cleaning the blood of toxins and waste products, and also controlling the water potential in the body. It's important that the water potential in the body is maintained so that all of the cells in our body have the right fluid amount in them, and our tissue fluid has the right consistency and volume as well. So it adjusts the level of volume that it produces to account for how much water we need to keep. Therefore, if it's a high amount of urine, then we're trying to lose water as we have too much. If there's a lower amount of urine, then we're trying to conserve water because we need to keep as much as we can. And in doing so, it filters the blood, cleaning the blood. The reason the blood needs to be cleaned is because as we carry out many processes, we build up a lot of toxic chemicals. And one of these toxic chemicals is urea. And urea itself is a product of the breakdown of amino acids. So in the liver, just as a recap, excess amino acids are turned into ammonia. And the ammonia is turned into urea by a particular biochemical cycle. And the urea is toxic. So if we let this build up in the blood, this would be very dangerous. So we need to remove this buildup of urea. The urea is removed from the blood and it's filtered into the kidney. And then the kidney excretes this as urine, which is then stored in the bladder and then sent out when in demand. So the kidney is an excretory organ. It takes a metabolic product, which is urea. It takes it out of the blood to form urine. Therefore, it's taken metabolic product and excreted it or removed it. And in doing so, the blood is removed of urea and it is cleaned. The second important role of the kidneys are in osmoregulation. So osmoregulation refers to controlling the amount of water and salts in the body. So it does this in lots of complex mechanisms, but mainly we'll be looking at how it controls the water potential of the blood and therefore the tissue fluid and our cells. We have to have the correct water potential around our cells so that cells don't burst or shrink. So in the right level of water potential, cells look like this, where they're in the right shape. And if we're talking about red blood cells, they have this biconcave shape and they're nice and intact. Cells can burst if the water potential is too great and cells can shrink if it's too low. So talking a bit more in detail about that, if the water potential in the blood is too high, then the water enters the cells and they burst. So if you imagine we've got a blood vessel and we have our red blood cells scattered throughout the, the blood. If the water potential is too high, then the water is going to move from an area where it's very watery to an area where there's less water. And in this case, it's going to move into the blood cells. And because it's doing this, they're going to swell up and they're going to burst open. So this kills the cells and it reduces the amount of red blood cells that we have. On the other side of the coin, if the water potential of the blood is too low, then the water leaves the cells and they shrink. So in the opposite scenario, we've got our blood vessel here, and with the blood cells inside the blood vessel, if the water potential outside is very, very low, then water will move from an area where it's watery, which is the inside of the cells, to outside, and therefore they would start shrinking and changing shape. And again, this is bad because the change in shape reduces their function, and it can reduce their oxygen carrying capacity. 
So water is lost in the body through various ways, and the main way is through urine, but there are other ways as well. Urine is the major way in which we lose water on a daily basis, but the other three methods are sweating, so particularly if the environment's very warm, breathing in the form of water vapour, and also faeces as well. So water is continuously being lost, but we do drink to make sure that we keep up our level of water. So what the kidney does is it takes the blood and it recognises how much water we need in the body and it controls the amount of urine that we produce so that the kidney can control the water potential of the blood. So for example, if we need to keep as much water as we can, for example if it's a very hot day or if we're dehydrated, then the kidney produces a small volume of urine or a small amount of urine so that we can serve as much water as possible. So the blood will come in and a lot of water will be taken back in. But if we're very, very hydrated and we need to lose water, then the kidney produces more urine if we need to get rid of some. Because if we didn't get rid of them, the cells would take up too much and burst. Similarly, if we don't keep water, in this case, the cells would shrink and we would struggle. So the kidneys alter the amount of urine dependent on how much water it needs to keep or remove from the blood. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.